Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Yup, it's that time of year where we talk about vampires, werewolves, and of course, witches. Whenever I see a bubbling witch's brew, the botanist in me wonders, what plants are they using? Let's explore. Hey friends, welcome back to the Nerdy Naturalist channel, where we do a biological analysis of all things pop. I'm botanist Dr. Ped Danishgar, and I want to share with you seven very real witches brew plants commonly featured in art, books, and movies. First up, Deadly Nightshade. Remember in the film The Nightmare Before Christmas, Sally would use Deadly Nightshade to knock out her oppressive creator, Dr. Finkelstein. Also known as Belladonna, Deadly Nightshade is very real. It can be recognized by its purple, bell-like flowers. Both the leaves and their distinct dark berries are toxic when ingested due to tropane alkaloids, which can cause delirium and hallucinations. Symptoms of nightshade poisoning include dilated pupils, blurred vision, loss of balance, flushing, slurred speech, delirium, and convulsions. The funny thing is, nightshade comes from the family Solanaceae, which contains things we eat like tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, and eggplant. Next up, poison hemlock. One of the ingredients of the witch's brew in Shakespeare's Macbeth, hemlock, should not be messed with. It is the plant that killed off Socrates, after all. Found in the carrot family, hemlock often gets mistaken for carrot. It has flowers that grow in umbels. It has hollow stems and bipinnate leaves that look fern-like. Purple in its stems often allow for us to distinguish it from wild carrots. Ingestion of the plant may result in central nervous system depression, respiratory failure, acute renal failure, and even death. And now a favorite, wormwood. Remember what made the bohemian artist see the green fairy in Moulin Rouge? It was the spirit absinthe, which is made from another witch's brew plant, the common wormwood. Wormwoods are straight growing plants with spirally arranged leaves that appear to be silver due to the hairs called trichomes. Wormwoods are often used for flavoring of wines, bitters, and spirits like absinthe, which were drank by many great artists like Toulouse-Lautrec, Van Gogh, Wilde, Hemingway, and Picasso. Now there's no proof that wormwoods and drinks will allow us to hallucinate or open up our minds, although many artists, such as the ones I have named, may argue differently. And now one from Harry Potter, Monk's Hood. When Severus Snape wanted to humiliate Harry Potter on his first day at Hogwarts, he asked him what the difference was between monkshood and wolfbane. Snape was right. These very real plants are the same. There are more than 250 species of monkshood, which are all part of the buttercup family. They get their name from their flowers, which have five petaloid sepals, which form a structure that looks like a cylindrical helmet. While in Harry Potter, these plants are used for potions that treat werewolves, Monk's Hood contains a substantial amount of a highly toxic aconite, a potent neurotoxin and cardiotoxin. Next up, a cousin to Nightshade, Jimson Weed. American artist Georgia O'Keeffe loved to paint Jimson Weed, which also has the common names Devil's Snare or Devil's Trumpet. It is recognized by its fragrant trumpet-like flowers of cream to purple. It also has a fruit, which is a spiny egg-shaped capsule. Across the Americas, indigenous peoples such as the Algonquin, Aztecs, Navajo, and Cherokee use this plant in sacred ceremonies for its hallucinogenic properties. In European witchcraft, it was supposedly a common ingredient for making witches' flying ointment. Regardless, this one is toxic, particularly in high doses. Next, a pretty one, foxglove. In the film Casino Royale, James Bond has something slipped into his martini, which makes him delirious at first, but then sends him into cardiac arrest. They diagnose him with digitalis toxicity. Digitalis, aka foxgloves, are another common witch's brew plant. Coming in a variety of colors, foxgloves are distinct with their multiple tubular flowers that grow on a tall spike. Foxgloves can strengthen the heart's ability to pull in blood, increasing blood flow throughout the body. In large doses, a person may experience a pounding feeling in the chest, as well as dizziness, nausea, and confusion. And now our last plant, Asphodel. The ancient Greeks thought Asphodel grew in the land of the dead. 
which is why so many poets like Edgar Allan Poe, Homer, and Robert Frost mention the plant when talking about the afterlife. Asphodels grow tall with white or yellowish flowers atop a handsome spike. Its grayish leaves are likely why they have been connected to the dead. Asphodel has been used for endless numbers of medical reasons, including treatments of cancers, viruses, and bacterial infections. It is often used for topical applications as well. I hope you enjoyed this list of witches' brew plants. There are so many more that perhaps I'll have to make another video for next Halloween. Thanks for joining me on this exploration. If you enjoyed the content, please press like. And if you want more nerdy content, please subscribe.